Family Theater presents Frank Lovejoy and Joan Banks. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Sob Sisters, starring Frank Lovejoy and Joan Banks. Now, here is your host, Bill Campbell. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Sob Sisters, starring Frank Lovejoy and Joan Banks. Will you just, for goodness sake, slow down, will you? We have nothing to talk about. Look, if you'll just listen to me, give me one minute, just one minute. I have more important things to do, and frankly, Mr. Abson, I think I've wasted just about enough time on you. I've got something important. You just have to listen to my side of it. Give me one minute. No. I've heard your side of it. It's all over, Al. But nothing. I'd never believe anything you might tell me. Never again. I've heard and read all the lies I can stand. They're not all lies. But don't get the idea I'm through with you, Al, because I'm not. Well, now, that's more like it. Maybe we can have some dinner and talk, huh? I'm not through with you by a long shot. No, sir. I am going to expose you as no human being has ever been exposed before. I am going to air your dirty wash for all to see. Any questions? Eva. Oh, now, wait a minute. So long, Al. Eva, you're destroying an empire. Next time, build it on something solid. Like honesty and truth. Eva, you can't do it. Oh, no. Watch me. Now, that might have sounded like the end of something to you, but actually it was more of a beginning than an end. You see, the girl in that little scene, Eva Murray, and the guy, well, he's the ex-beau, Howard Albertson. But what you just heard took place a long time before Eva became such an important figure. And the build-up to it was a process, too. That started when Eva Murray was just breaking in on the paper. I'll fill you in a little. You see, Eva is the publisher's daughter, and all her life, she had only one real ambition. She wanted to be a sob sister. That's what later reporters are called. So a few months after she graduated from college, her father sent it to the editor, and as per her father's instructions, the editor sent her to May Abernathy. I'm, uh, May Abernathy. You're May Abernathy? The one who... Uh, the one who, uh, offers all the advice to the lovelorn and troubled. I'm never too busy to lend an ear and a bit of comfort. That's, uh, <laughs> that's me. Well, is, is the real May Abernathy ill or something? I mean, you're just filling in for her or something like that, aren't you? Oh, no. Mm-mm. You must be fooling. Oh, no, not at all. Now, who could be better qualified than I am? I have no children, so I can be thoroughly objective about telling people who have how to raise them. You know, most fathers and mothers get too close to the problems and experience and make them afraid to touch the subject in print. And I'm not married, so I can be objective about marriages and how to make them work. It uh, all works out pretty well. I don't know as I like that. Oh, no? No. And I think something should be done about it. It's dishonest and... Well, I can't think of anything more deceitful. Oh, you think uh, May Abernathy should be a little old gray-haired lady in a beaded hat and a black shawl, I suppose. Well, does it occur to you that most little old gray-haired ladies who raise families successfully might be much too busy, even if they were capable of the job? Is that any excuse for such deceit? Well, and another thing, besides the ones which are printed in the column, I write from 85 to 120 advice letters a day. Now, uh... I'm a fairly young man, Miss Murray, and when I get home at night, I'm dog-tired. I'm afraid the schedule alone would turn the kind of May Abernathy you'd have into nothing but a damp spot under a beaded hat at the end of the first week. Well, still it's misleading. You shouldn't write under a name like that. Well, I can choose any pen name I want, but uh, if it'll make you feel any better, I actually share the name with four ministers, three priests, a rabbi, a marriage counseling service, a university psychology department, and... uh, they all helped me write my letters of advice. 
I still can't say that I approve. Oh, well, it's not required that you approve, but it is required that I break you in as a reporter, so uh, let's be about it, Miss Murray. Well, all right, but might I ask one question? Oh, what's that? Does my father know about this? Well, the publisher usually knows what's going on in his own newspaper. Is that all, Miss Murray? That's all, Miss Abernathy. The name is Byrne, Ira Byrne. Well, I think this whole business should be brought to my father's attention. Oh, fine. I was sure we'd get on. I'm not just another run-of-the-mill reporter, Mr. Byrne. Ah, oh, shall we go? The sooner you realize that, the better it will be for you. Ah, hmm. uh, pardon me, Miss Murray. Don't you think you'll need your purse? A purse? Oh, where is it? Oh, it's on the desk. All right. I'm ready. Oh, one other thing. Yes? Do you have a pencil in your purse? Pencil? Well, of course I have a pencil. It's, um, it's right, uh... Now, where is it? I know I put one in just... Well, here, you can use this one. You know, you're right about one thing, Miss Murray. Oh? You're certainly not just another run-of-the-mill reporter. I can't remember working harder in my life than I did that first week of Eva Murray's employment. It wasn't that Eva was slow. She wasn't. She was good, but holding down my own desk and helping her learn her job and carrying on a very noisy running word battle turned out to be just a little more than I could handle. At the end of that first week, both of us got a call from Eva's father, the publisher. Ira, this is Howard Albertson, our city engineer. How we've met. Indeed we have. Eva's been dragging him along in our lunch dates. Then you know, Ira, that my daughter and Mr. Albertson are engaged to be married. Oh, yes, sir, I know. What's this all about, Dad? Just this. Ira, Mr. Albertson has given me to know that you're giving my daughter a hard time. Oh. He said that, did he? Oh, now, don't play it innocent, Byrne. Oh, why should I play it innocent? Sure, I've been giving Miss Murray a hard time, and just about the same way I've given other cubs a hard time when they were too big for their, uh, <clears throat> that is, when they thought they were too smart. You know, you can't learn a business if you think you've already learned everything there is to know about it. Oh, come on now. You can't say you're treating her the way you'd treat any cub reporter. Well, all right. Maybe a little more than that. She's the publisher's daughter, and in her spoiled way, she keeps reminding me of this fact. So maybe I ride her a little harder, but not too much. Uh, pardon me, but I really can't see how you come into this, Al. Well, we're engaged, my dear. Somebody has to look out for your interests. I can fight my own battles. A.J., would you mind telling me what this is all about? A few minutes ago, Ira, Mr. Albertson came into my office and suggested that a good deal of political pressure might be brought to bear on this newspaper. If I didn't discharge you... Oh, I see. Well, what a thing to do. What a thing to do. Now, don't go making me the heavy... Every time we go out, you do nothing but complain about the terrible Ira Byrne. I thought you wanted him fired. Well, maybe I don't think he should have the advice column or that he should pretend to be someone he isn't simply because, well, to me, it seems fundamentally dishonest. But I certainly don't want the man to be thrown out on my account. Well, be that as it may, I thought everyone involved should be present to hear my answer. Here it is. Mr. Albertson, no, I will not discharge Mr. Byrne. Nor do I believe your associates would allow you to incur the political animosity of this paper merely to satisfy a personal whim. Oh, now, A.J., that's not exactly what I meant. You may call me Mr. Murray. And furthermore, I want you to know, Mr. Albertson, that any further attempts at intimidation around here would certainly not be in your best interest. As a policy, this paper has no political opinion, but policy can change. That will be all, Mr. Albertson. That will be all? Well, sounds like you're dismissed, Buster. Well, Eva, I hope you're satisfied. I just hope you're satisfied. Al, I'm sorry, oh, but I didn't forget mean... it. Just forget it. Well, that takes care of that. Well, I simply can't understand Al doing a thing like that. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll bet you can't. A.J., if you don't mind, I guess I just wasn't cut out to be a teacher. I'd like to get back to just doing the column. No, I... I didn't figure on things like this happening, and my own work is suffering. You know that. Try it for one more week. Dad, I think Mr. Byrne is right. I think it might be wiser if you had somebody else help me get started. No, now you're thinking about what's wise and what isn't. Well, for your information, young lady, Ira is the only man on the paper who offered to help. Now is probably the only one who'd have the job. But 
Aren't you the publisher? Sure I am. But there's nothing in our contract with the newspaper guild that says a reporter has to put up with the kind of trouble you've been giving Ira. And don't think I haven't heard about it. I've heard it from your mother, that mealy-mouthed fiancé of yours, the boys in the city room, line of typists. In fact, from just about everybody, except you and Ira. Uh, wait a minute, sir. You mean you haven't heard it uh, from her, A.J.? Certainly not. She may be spoiled, hard to get along with, officious, and at times a general pain in the neck, but I can say one thing for her. She fights her own battles. Well, thanks. Now... How about it, Ira? Just one more week. That might be enough anyway. Probably from there, she'll know her way around. One more week as a personal favor. Well, uh... Okay, one more week. I won't forget it, boy. May I get back to my work now? I'd like a word with you in private first. I take it that's my dismissal. Well, you could wait in the outer office. All right. Oh, Dad. Yeah? It's almost noon, and since I'm seeing Al for lunch anyway, I'd, I'd like to go a little early. Kind of smooth things over? Smooth things over? Well, after all, he was doing it for me. All right, all right. No accounting for tastes. I'll see you at 1.30, Ira. Sure, sure. At oh, 1.30? You'll see him at 1. All right, then. 1 o'clock. Ira, uh, I uh, don't suppose you're interested in my daughter? Oh, sure I am. Oh. I think she can be a good newsman with a little work. Oh, I... I meant romantically. Oh, no, sir. No, not at all. Too bad. Well, why do you ask? Oh, no reason. I hoped that, as I thought, Albertson was a little too concerned. Thought he might have been worried. Well, there's no cause for him to worry on my account. Can't see what she sees in Albertson. Can't understand it. Well, I don't know. He's got a lot of flash. He looks like the original man of distinction, you know, lots of chrome. Maybe that's it. Snappy-looking dude, good dresser. Such a premature gray in the hair. And he's smooth, A.J. There's no getting around that. She's, uh, she's not an ugly girl, Ira. Almost unugly. In fact, most men would call her attractive. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd say she's downright beautiful. Well, as long as you feel that way, well, why don't you... Now, no, hold on. Oh, I uh, don't mean anything big. Uh, just date her a few times, you know, just to distract her from that fancy Dan. No, no deal. Well, I do happen to know she finds you attractive. Well, being May Abernathy puts me in contact with enough trouble. But every man should have troubles of his own, I reckon. Yeah, well, each man to his own kind. I I find it a whole lot easier dealing with other people's, but thanks anyway. Well, it was just the thought. Now, um, as you know, Eve is my only child. Yeah. Well, I've tried to be a good father, and in some respects, I think I've done a pretty good job. She has a respect for honesty and truth one seldom sees in a person. Amen. And many other truly admirable traits. Yeah, I'll concede that. As my only child, someday she'll inherit this newspaper. Oh, by the time that happens, A.J., she'll know what to do with it. That's exactly my point. Right now, Eve has got a, well, you could call it a distorted picture of what the business is really like. Oh, sure, she's been to college and she majored in journalism, but still... She expects to see people rushing around with press cards in their hats? And pull down ties, always getting scoops, you know. But she must have been around here as a child. No, both of us. Her mother and I made up our minds that we were not going to choose her life for her, that we were we're not going to try to influence her one way or the other about what kind of a career she should follow. I'm afraid we bent over backward. Well, she was never in this building till last week. Well, why tell me all this? Why? Well, Ira, I want you to help me pull my chestnuts out of the fire. As I said, Eva has a somewhat distorted idea of news work. And, well, some years ago, when she made up her mind to come into the business, I made her a promise. She wanted to lead a crusade. A crusade? You know, like in the movies and on television. Have an exclusive on some big story, some big scoop that would change the world. I told her I'd let her handle the first one that came up after she went on the payroll. Didn't want to influence her, huh? That was after she'd made up her mind. So she wants to change the world. She might settle with changing the town a little. That was quite a promise. Well, how was I to know she'd remember 
Fox. He couldn't have been more than 10 or 12 at the time. Well, what do you want me to do? Two things, Ira. I want you to help her with it when she finds something to crusade about. See that she handles things all right. You won't have to worry about your work at the May Abernathy desk. I'll see it's covered. And the second thing? I want you to help her find something in a hurry. Well, in a hurry? Right now, she doesn't know beans about reporting. That may be, but I want her thoroughly distracted. Uh, so she won't have time for Albertson? You think I'm wrong? Well, I'd sure hate to have him for a boss. No more than I'd hate to have him for a son-in-law. See what you can do, Ira. See what you can do. I worked on it. In fact, I spent many a happy hour with Eva going through the paper's own library looking for something that might have been worth a small crusade. The question of fluoridation was a growing one in our city, so I suggested that. It was time for the smallpox vaccinations in the schools and the anti-rabies shots for dogs. I figured the pay of the city firemen and policemen could use a boosting crusade. There must have been half a dozen other things that I pointed out to her, but I always got the same answer. Not big enough, Ira. I'm sorry. Not, uh, big enough. I know how hard you've been working, and I really do appreciate the help you've been giving me, so please, don't look so, well, so, so dejected. It won't be long. We'll find something, and when we do, it'll be big, something we can get our teeth into. But we don't have to find it today. There's plenty of time. <laughs> And I suppose to her way of thinking there was no need to hurry. But the more time I spent with her and the more I saw of her fiancé, Albertson, the harder I worked to fulfill A.J.'s request. When it happened, it came from the most unexpected quarter, from Albertson himself. We had stopped by his office to pick him up for lunch. He was putting on his overcoat and we were all about ready to go out the door when his phone rang. Oh, excuse me for a moment, will you? Certainly. Our business before pleasure. <laughs> Hello. Oh? Oh, of course I'll talk to him. Put him on. Uh, why don't you two sit down? I'll be right with... Oh, hello, Johnny. <laughs> I think that's the least I can do in return for past favors, huh? A writ? Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Uh, where was that again? 17th Precinct. That's all right. Goodbye. Who is that, Al? Huh? Oh, uh, just an old friend of mine. In jail? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, a <laughs> little mix-up. A mistake, of course. Oh, but of course. I've, uh... I've got to make a call. You want to run ahead and reserve a table? We might as well, Ira. Oh, we don't mind waiting. Well, why don't you go on ahead? Order for me, too. It'll save a little time. No, go ahead. Make your call. We're in no great rush, are we, Eva? Uh... Well, I don't suppose so. Oh, it's all right, Al. Business before pleasure, huh? <laughs> well, I can make the call later. Make it now. Now, this, this won't take a minute. It involves a little politicking, that's all. I didn't want to bore you. I'd like to see how it's done. Well, this will be right out of the handbook. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, nothing, nothing. Hello, give me the office of the city prosecutor, please. Howard Albertson calling... This will only take a moment. Hello, Abel. This is Al. Thought you might be interested. The city just voted for what looks like a pretty good bond issue. That's right. Civic improvement. No, no, I don't know any of the particulars, but I can get them for you and send them over. Thought you might be interested. Ah, it's nothing at all. Forget it. What's that? No, no, there's nothing you can do for... I say, I almost forgot there is one little thing. Pretty smooth boyfriend you Actually, have, Actually, it's not very much. A friend of mine is being held over at the 17th Precinct Station. He's not guilty. And, and what was that? Well, uh, he's accused of making book on races. You never get a conviction, so I thought I'd let you know. Save the city the cost of prosecuting. I would appreciate it, Abel. That's right. 17th Precinct. His name is Arnold R. Johnson. That's all right, Abel. Right, and thank you. Bye. Well, there, that didn't take long, did it? Well, pretty smooth, Al. No, not at all. Is that, um, is that standard practice, Al, out of the handbook? Well, certainly. Well, it isn't as if my friend were guilty of anything. 
or I sounded like it. You're saying I'd free a criminal? Oh, come on now, Burn. Then why did you have to offer the city prosecutor a bribe? Well, it might have been a small favor, but I wouldn't call it a bribe. Look, let's all go to lunch, eh, before we start making a mountain of, out of what's not even a molehill? Well, thanks anyway, but if it's all right with you people, I think I'll go back to the office. I... I seem to have lost my appetite, too. We left Albertson in his office, and neither one of us said anything as we walked down the hall and rode the elevator to the street level. In fact, we didn't speak until we were on the street. Mind if I say something? I think I know what you're going to say, Ira. You wanted a cause, something to crusade about. What could be better than corruption in government? It's a, a kind of unfaithfulness to have a public trust and betray it. You, uh, you don't sound so sure. That almost sounded like a question. It's a little different when your crusade might hurt people close to you. You'd be squaring off against your fiancé, Eva. And the city prosecutor. Probably quite a few others. What do you think, Ira? Well, since you asked... Morally, your first obligation is to be faithful to yourself. You're the girl who wanted to save the world. Do you want that badly enough to pay something for it? I'll see you later, Ira. Made up your mind? There isn't any choice. Good, honey. Where are you going now? 17th Precinct Station. I'm going to give Al the benefit of the doubt anyway. I'm going to interview the arresting officer. Then I'll go back and see Al. To either apologize or... Well, to tell him what I'm going to do. Eva, will you listen for just a... Must you walk so fast? Slow down, will you? I'm sorry, Al. We have nothing to talk about anymore. Now look, if you just listen to me, give me one minute, just one minute. I have more important things to do, and frankly, Mr. Fixit, I think I've wasted just about enough but time you on you. just have to listen to my side of it. But don't get the idea I'm through with you, Al, because I'm not. Well, now, that's more like it. Maybe we can have some dinner and talk. Huh? I'm not through with you by a long shot. No, sir. I am going to crusade against your element. You're destroying an empire. Next time, build it on something solid. Eva, you can't do it. Oh, no? Watch me. It was a funny feeling. It was a kind of glad, mean feeling. A.J. had asked me to do something for him, and I'd done it. But I sat there at my desk for a long time, feeling, well, very much like a heel. Even though the romance couldn't have amounted to much anyway, helping to break it up, well, it, it made me feel mean. And the glad part, well, I'd saved a nice girl from marrying a bum, and sure, that was reason to be happy, but there was something else. I found myself pleased that Eva no longer had a steady. I guess I was afraid to look too deeply into that one. So I went out to dinner instead and then home and to bed. After about four hours of no sleep, I got up and went back to the office. I headed for my old desk, the one with the May Abernathy sign on it. Hi. What? Well, what are you doing here? Working. A little late, isn't it? Oh, a little. But I suddenly found myself with a free evening. I guess I'll have a lot of them from now on. I guess that I should say I'm sorry about, uh, about your romance. I'm not. You're not? I expected to be heartbroken. I rushed home and tried to feel sorry for myself. You know, gave it the old school try, threw myself on the bed, and got all puckered up to cry my eyes out. Nothing happened. After a while, I got bored. So here I am. Going to start your crusade? We sure are. I mean, if you still want to help. More than ever. I got these books. City records for the last 12 years. And this, do you know what this is? Let me see. It's the record of arrests of a Mr. Arnold Johnson in connection with bookmaking. 26 arrests. 
two convictions. And this is a sworn statement from the officer who arrested him the last time, the one I talked to this afternoon. And this is the police blotter from the 17th precinct. How did you get the police blotter? <laughs> Never mind, but wait till you read it. Brother. Do you think we can do it, Ira? I mean, really do it? Well, it's a worthy cause. It's about time somebody tried it. Tomorrow we'll set it up, okay? We'll start the first thing in the morning. Well, why not tonight? Well, it's been a long day. Let me buy you a cup of coffee and take you home. Hmm? But we might get a lot done if we... Oh, come on. It'll be our first date. Our first date? Well, first of many if... Uh, if it's all right with you. But it's more than just all right. Good. Shall we go? first date. How can I refuse? I want to get you in early enough. There's a big day tomorrow. Ira, I thought you didn't... I thought you didn't like me. Can a man change his mind? So the campaigns began. Mine that evening and Eva's the next morning. Both are enjoying considerable success. Eva's wearing my ring and the town is getting a clean up like it's never had before. In fact, her campaign's almost over in our city. A.J. bought a chain of newspapers covering a total of six other cities. And it turned out that he was a little bit wrong about his daughter. You see, she's not quite satisfied yet. She won't settle for just cleaning up one town. She wants to change the world. I just thought I'd let you know, in case your town is next. This is William Campbell again. What would you say to all of us getting together on a wonderful enterprise? An enterprise to bring greater peace, security, and happiness to the world. It seems like a large undertaking, but when there are millions of us sincerely thinking about that and praying and working for a better world, it can be done. In many ways, we're failing to overcome the unrest and intolerance and hate in the world around us because we do so little about the misunderstanding and disruption in family life because we'll never have peace in the world or in our homes as long as we forget the importance of God's help and the power of prayer. We'll have a better and happier world if we have better and happier homes. Homes in which there is the simple evidence of faith in God and the faithful practice of family prayer. We need prayer in our lives because all of us need God's help. So let's get together on an enterprise for every family, all families in America and the world praying together for peace. Yes, a world that will pray together for peace will stay together in peace, just as the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Transcribed, The Sob Sisters, starring Frank Lovejoy and Joan Banks. Bill Campbell was your host. Others in the cast were John Stevenson and Herb Butterfield. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is George Crowell expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Passion and Death of Christ, starring Ethel Barrymore. Robert Young will be your host. And on Easter weekend, over most of these stations, Family Theater will present a special hour-long Easter program, The Triumphant Hour, starring Walter Brennan, Joan Leslie, Stephen McNally, Dan O'Herlihy, and Loretta Young, and featuring the Roger Wagner Corral. Please consult your local paper for the time and the day. Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.